The healthcare system feels the sting of a recent surge in COVID cases. The decrease in VAT off to a good start, and police are on the hunt for an alleged thief. Good evening, everyone. I'm Leah Cooper with your JCN News for this Tuesday, January 4th. Some 130 healthcare workers at the Princess Margaret Hospital are currently out of the healthcare system, either in isolation or quarantine, leaving some shortages in some essential services at the public healthcare facility. This is due to exposure to COVID-19. According to Health Minister Dr. Michael Darville, who was responding to the concerns raised by reporters just before the weekly cabinet meeting. Those concerns include reports of scores of persons reporting to PMH with COVID-19 symptoms and not being able to receive assistance. Those concerns include reports of scores of persons reporting to PMH with COVID-19 symptoms and not being able to receive assistance after testing positive for the virus due to staff shortages. Dr. Darvel was asked whether PMH is in crisis mode. We do admit that some of our staff is out as a result of exposure to COVID, whether it's isolation or quarantine, but we are able to provide the essential services. At our legacy unit, uh, we have uh, admissions and we're opening up more of the tents, but I must admit that due to the exposure of some of our staff members, some of the essential services had to be cut back and even though we have sufficient bed space we are now restructuring to ensure that we find a staff where individuals who will be admitted will be able to go in those particular wards. Dr. Darvel adds that those presenting at PMH A&E are being taken care of. Now with hospitalizations increasing over the last several days the health and wellness minister also confirming to the media that 55 persons are in the Princess Margaret Hospital. The Ministry of Health's latest dashboard for January 2nd pegs hospitalizations at 43 with 31 patients at PMH. Uh, our meeting this morning has confirmed that there is about 55 persons at the Princess Margaret Hospital who are COVID positive. Of the 55, it's difficult to differentiate those who may be COVID positive with symptoms from COVID or whether or not they are COVID positive with other complications in hospital. It's a cross section and we're trying to get the exact number. The Bahamas is in the fourth wave of the pandemic, which Dr. Darvel admits is challenging. He says the government is doing all it can in the midst of this fourth wave. Well, the government is doing all that we can do with this situation. When we look at what's happening around the world, every country across the globe is having difficulty with the control of this new Omicron variant. It's very important that the Bahamian people realize that they have a part to play. We must execute the proper protocols and ensure that we wear our masks when we're in public places and we are able to go from place to place, minimizing our contact with individuals. It is a challenge. Uh, we will definitely be untrue to say it's not a challenge. And what we're experiencing, every country around the globe is experiencing these amount of cases because the, the virus is so transmissible uh, and very infectious. And as a result of public gatherings in private places, everyone is susceptible. Even where we are right now in close proximity, we are susceptible even with utilizing the proper protocols. As it stands, a little over 100 healthcare professionals are out of the system in New Providence, about 30 at the Rand Memorial Hospital in Grand Bahama, according to Dr. Darville. He adds that the government is working across the board to bring healthcare professionals from public health to ensure that core hospitals are functioning adequately. That said, the new year brought with it a record number of COVID infections on just about every island of the Bahamas. The Ministry of Health and Wellness confirming over the first two days of the new year a total of 726 cases. On Saturday, January 1st, 249 new infections were added to the COVID-19 dashboard. And on Sunday, January 2nd, 477 new cases were confirmed. A total of 622 were confirmed on New Providence, 18 on Andros, 14 on Grand Bahama, 13 new cases on Abaco, 8 each on Eleuthera and Exuma, 
The Berry Islands and Acklands, each with two cases, Bimini and Cat Key in Nagua, Long Island and Cat Island are recording one case apiece at 35 cases with the locations pending. Crooked Island, Mayaguana, Ragged Island and San Salvador, the only islands spared from the COVID wrath over the weekend. 41 of those testing positive have a history of travel within 14 days. 34 from New Providence, 6 from Exuma and 1 from Gran Bahama. Total confirmed cases in country now at 26,011. Of that total, 3,203 cases are active. Hospitalizations have increased to 43, 39 patients moderately ill, four in intensive care. There's been no change in the COVID death toll, which currently stands at 717. 37 deaths are under investigation. 61 people were reported recovered from the virus in the first Two days of this month, total recoveries now at 21,901. In compliance with the COVID-19 protocols on social distancing, the acting accountant general of the Bahamas is advising that the pension verification exercise for this month for all Bahamas government pensioners has been deferred until July 2022. All pensioners who verified during July 2021 pension verification exercise will continue to receive their monthly pension for the period of January 2022 to June 2022. For further clarity or questions, pensioners may contact the Pension Section, Treasury Department, NASA at telephone numbers 302-0519, 302-0521, or 302-0539. Bahamians and residents across the country and around the world tuned in on New Year's night to watch the widely anticipated virtual Junkanoo experience. But the event ended up being heavily criticized with scores of negative public statements and backlash of the production of this event and its costs. Minister with Responsibility Mario Boleg sought to bring clarity on the event that many labeled a disaster. Our Lorencia Smith has more in this report. The Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture receiving scathing reviews from critics on social media regarding the recent virtual New Year's Day Chunkin Parade, which was aired on social media platform Facebook and on television over the weekend. But the Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture Mario Bolek says he's proud of the production. He told reporters this much just before the weekly cabinet meeting on Tuesday morning. However, the minister did admit that there were some challenges as a result of a high percentage of the production team testing positive for COVID-19. We are in a COVID environment and, and sad to say 90% of the production team got COVID and they were unable to do their work that would allow them to meet the deadline or do their work to the perfection, I should say, to allow them to meet the deadline that we wanted to air the production. Unfortunately, uh, the work that they would have put in would have not been sufficient to satisfy us. But again, I'm not, I'm not taking anything away from them. They're going to correct their errors and we can move forward. Now, with the parade being strongly scrutinized, many expressed disappointment in the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture, also questioning whether the ministry has lost the spirit of Chunkanoo. Many also question exactly what the allocated $300,000 was spent on. Ministry officials provided a fact sheet this past Sunday, which revealed that a budget allocated for the event included virtual parades for New Providence, Grand Bahama, and the Family Islands. A total of 14 groups took part in the virtual parade, an even split between A and B groups. This year, a total of $126,000 was given as a grant, 11,000 to Category A groups and 7,000 to Category B groups. Minister Boleg provided additional insight to the fact sheet. The production was only $24,000. $126,000 was given to the groups, which has a stipend for them to prepare themselves for the competition. The remaining balance, when you add the 126 and the 124, that's what covers New Providence. The remaining balance will be for virtual Junkanoo in Grand Bahama and the Family Islands. Minister Boleg dispelled rumors that the contract for the production of the event was given to a foreign company. The minister assured reporters that the company hired for the job is in fact a Bahamian company. Asked when the public can see the virtual Junkanoo experience executed on Grand Bahama and the Family Islands, the minister says this. Well, I know we, there's a meeting going to be held hopefully this week in Grand Bahama for them to organize themselves so that they can set a date. Uh, persons in the family islands is doing that as well. As soon as we get a 
a, a confirmation on the firm dates, we will let you know. Uh, we're going to be working along with uh, one or two other production companies along with this one and ZNS to see if we can get the family islands up and running pretty soon. Face-to-face -face Chankanu parades were canceled over the last two years due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. The minister adds that the production company has until January 9th to get the fixed version to him. I'm Laurencia Smith for JCN News. Thanks, Laurencia. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us.